minutes, 20 minutes. And uh, to an academician who is used to taking three hours session in a go. 20 minutes is slightly constrained. But nevertheless, I think that this topic will flash my presentation up. Now my topic is uh, even sand is brandable. <clears throat> now here in this particular topic, and I will rush a little fast because I thought my session is going to be a little longer and have enough opportunity to discuss. But in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise certain fundamental questions. When you say that, well. What is marketing? It is such a simple question. But the answer to that particular question sometimes is difficult. We tend to be locked in a paradigm. This paradigm is what we inherit. And once we are locked in that paradigm, then our answers tend to be very, very stereotypical. And we are now hitting a particular juncture where we need to break away from paradigms. Companies are looking for people who can think out of the box. So out of box thinking, innovation, creativity, these are new words which are used in, in the space of marketing. Not even marketing, political leaders are thinking about it, but how do we break away from this paradigm? Because this paradigm does not lead to any good so far as society and planet is concerned. At a micro level, when you talk about managers, what's our challenge? Our challenge is to look at our products and customers, our markets, everything around us in a different way so that we can devise solutions, right? Which is good for all. Now, somebody can help me. I'll, I'll, I'll run quickly, right? If I can move here, I'm allowed to move here. Very quickly, what will be your answer? Just one person can give the answer. Just one person. What happened? One. Quickly, I have only 20 minutes and there are going to flash red cards, right? What's your answer? Quickly. Anybody? Yes? What happened? Anybody? What's your reaction? No. I said, that's okay. Can you now say what happened? What happened? What happened is that well? Answers go different. No. There's somebody saying answer is different. Can you answer this? What do you mean? What do customers of cab services pay and pay for very quickly. Traveling. Yes. Traveling. For traveling. Anybody else? Traveling. Quickly. What do we pay? What do we pay? So that's what I'm talking about. People don't pay. What do we pay? Do we pay cash? Answer is no. If you say that well, People pay in cash. You have lost it. People pay in time. So when you are manager of cab services, make sure what kind of business model you are going to develop. If your model is about extracting cash, maximum cash from customer, you are doomed. Your cab services should minimize the time which customer is going to pay because time is new currency. So I'm going to raise again some stupid questions. Where do you wear an Nike? One observation, anybody? Anybody? We are all students of marketing. One gentleman, anyone? For branding. Sorry? For branding. Where do you wear an Nike? Yes, sir. It's a stupid question. Everybody knows that we wear Nike on, on, on. Again, if your answer is 
we were like you on. Pete, you lost it. How much money can you extract from customer? If you if a customer keeps on wearing shoes, where? On feet. No, you got to wear it okay, up here. So there is when you talk about marketing and branding, so I'm raising a stupid question. Go back. I don't fit into this dress. Many times girls say that. Oh, well, I don't fit into this dress. This is my Chanel dress. Mango dress, Zara dress. I don't fit into this. And now it is gentlemen also. Get yourself New York. What's your observation? What's your observation here? What's your observation? It's a paradigm shift. Who is getting bought? The products are not getting sold, customers are bought. So you modify your body to get New York. We are talking about very, very simple. How do we compete? So what I'm saying is, what's our model of competition based on our understanding of markets? Who do we compete? Who do we compete for? Who, are, who is our competition? How do we compete very quickly? Value in orbit or value orbit? These are two strategies. So, normally, we tend to get stuck up in narrow understanding of market and we follow the strategy. So, take example. Mantra is what? Murder competition, right? Murder competition. So what? These are, this is, these are all moves to murder competition, right? No, yes? You are murdering competition. Then what happens? What eventually is going to happen to your throne? My God. So if you compete like this, we are not going to be anywhere. We are not going to be anywhere. So what do you need to do? Let's look at that throne from a different perspective. Because if you look at your throne in the same way, what you're going to do? You're going to outcompete with each other in terms of adding one product, product attribute there, one attribute there, and it's going to be specification war. So what do you do? Is it possible for you to move up in the value orbit instead of beating your competitors within the same orbit? What does a detergent powder do? Answer me quickly. Anyone? 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 So what is it? It's a stupid question and this answer is? Is this answer is? This answer is stupid. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you do like this, what kind of strategy you're going to make? You are going to float in that orbit, right? Mm -hmm. And do my detergent better. What happens? What's branding all about? Stupid. This is what I had planned to show you the commercials as to how they did what is called trajectory defined strategy. So this is how you compete, right? This ad, probably you're familiar, maybe it would be familiar. Tol mol ke ke dekho to, other kilo sons, ordinary sons, dusre powder se, ek kilo ke bada hai. That means half kg of sir is as good as one kg of ordinary powder. So you're fighting on price, right? Then, you find that well, my sir is better in doing this very obvious job of fighting stains, right? So, you'll keep searching for stains because my powder is so good that it gets rid of them immediately. And then it comes to fight for different types of power. So, suppose you are in an innovator, right? Innovators. I'll come to you. 
So if my detergent is able to remove ink stains better, how will you find? As competitor, presents anybody? I am your competitor, my detergent fights stains of ink better, right? If you are a competitor, what will you do? You are. So you will look for, you will commission your marketing research company to find out stains which are harder to remove than the stains of ink. Isn't it? So how about rust? Then one somebody will discover rust, somebody will say X, somebody else. So what is that? You are competing. Right? So what is the business of detergent? Tell me, what is the business of detergent? <coughs> this is exactly opposite of what goddamn detergent is supposed to do. How can detergent be lower off? <laughs> Orbit change. The business of detergent is to remove stains and the paradigm is what? As a mother, you will keep on telling your kids, don't behave in a fashion, don't play, don't go in rain, don't get yourself sullied in mud, because things are bad and I have to work very hard. So in the process, what happens? You become good maid, bad mother. Good maid, bad mother. Self said no. Be a good mother. Be a good mother. The job of the detergent powder is to clean clothes, but job of self is to allow you to make good mother. How will you become good mother? Let your child have stains because every stain is a story story of learning, of growth. So if your child does not fall, he does not learn. If your child does not slip, he does not learn. If your child does not climb trees, he does not learn. If your child does not play freely in cricket, he does not learn. So what happens? You become a better parent. So what is self brand all about? So this is what I'm talking about. What is branding all about? Branding is all about appropriating an idea, okay? An idea which comes out of your vision, not science. So what do we know about soil? What do we know about soil? Anybody? It's useless. It is useless, therefore it does not come out right. How diamond? Is it not equally useless? Tell me, anybody who says that your diamond is useful, raise your hand. Anybody who can sort and say diamond is useful, it's equally useless. No, yes? Because only dentists will require diamond to drill on the tip or glass cutter. But what diamond has got to do here? What's diamond have got? What diamond has got to do with love? Try to do chemically and physically. If you are a physicist and if you are a chemistry expert, tell me, is there any connection between diamond and love? Answer is absolutely no. So how do you compete with diamonds? From minds to mysteries. So there is Tiffany. So business of diamonds is to cut, but business of diamond brand is to express love. So if you fall in love, get your girlfriend a small diamond. It says it all. So what is the business of brand here? What I'm saying is the same thing. You need to burst. You need to get out of your paradigm. The paradigm which we inherit which is what locks in within orbit strategy and we start beating the competition. So 
It's about transcendence. The last word is critical. Recontextualization. I will just. It's about abstraction. Why abstract? Physical things can be engineered. They can be measured. So, take example. If somebody is so he explained expression. The point is, if your product is measurable, your competitor is going to measure it, make it better. China does not. Makes it better. So get your product out of this man, man what you call measurement uh, management. Uh, measurement. So how do you do it? So this is what I call in this uh, in my classes as ghostization. Ghostization. So have you seen ghost? Has anyone in this audience seen ghost? But are you scared of it? Yes, we are scared of it. So brand does what? You make your brand a ghost. A lovely ghost. So that when you think about your brand, you go mad. You go mad. And when you go mad, what happens? The price in elasticity vanishes. Isn't it? So many a times, you buy a Rolex watch. You say, God damn, does this watch give you time any better? Does it look? Does it look very jazzy like good? What you call, you know? Yes, watches. You say, no, it's very ordinary looking. And in fact, it's not also really accurate today. It's not very accurate. Because say, hand, bomb, what, oh, sorry, hand movement charged watch. But then, what do you think I'm on it? Yes, I don't know. Do you want to buy it? Yes. Will you go on Where to buy it? Yes. Will you say it? Will you take it? Yes. So you're crazy. So that should make you crazy. But how do you make your customers crazy? So, what is the business of my product and what is the business of my brand? That's what is very, very critical for you to understand. So, let's go to... What's the critical question here? It's difficult to answer, is it not? What is the difference? It's abstract difference. So, how do you go? You say, affect to plan. So, you fall in love many times, you know. As, as boys, young boys and girls, you tend to fall in love, right? And many times our parents object. What the hell are you doing? What do you want this girl? I'll get you a better girl. Isn't it? And look, I have my friend's daughter. And he's got a castle in Kathmandu. Isn't it? He's got three Mercedes. Two of these Mercedes will come to you. And then you look at your father like this. He so, said, are you listening to me? Oh, yes. Do you know what I said? No. What happened? Blindness. It's affective blindness. So brands need to create affective blindness. How do you do that? So don't look at the same same thing in the same fashion. The challenge is we are condemned to look at things in the same fashion as our parents have seen, as our neighborhood sees as our friends is. But there are only one or two people who look at things in a different way. So, what's Apple all about? Not your cat from thinking that, well, mobile phone is all about communicating. Apple says, no. It's about experience. You say, God damn, what the hell this experience got to do with a communicating device? And you know the result. These are all examples. So all of us, are, God gives us what? God gives us eyes. And eyes are common. About vision. So don't go to an opti optician to get your vision corrected. He corrects your sight but not vision. So few of us have got vision. So look at the same thing. So what happens? How do you look at your soil? If you continue to look at your soil the same way as others see, you will not be able to create a strong brand out of it. So what do you do? What you see here is a can. 
right? But can can become an object of art. It is possible. It becomes unique. It goes up in hierarchy, and it charges, fetches a lot of price. So from useless to invaluable. For the time constraint, I will cut it. So, how do you look at your soil? So, sit and examine if you were to plant the soil of your institution, how should you do it? Your transition is that, well, how do I look at my soil? So that, take, if, if I can uh, develop some kind of picture here, at the bottom is your door mat, right? And the soil is left there. You don't want it to enter in. Right? But can there be a soil which you keep in your home at a place which is very, very sacred place? Is it possible? Is it possible? Answer is yes. How do you look at your soil? So you can make a transition. So the business of soil, take example if you're marketing soil of your institution, how can we brand it? The soil continues to be worthless, right? But you can inject worth in by making it separate. It's all a question of how do you look at your soil. So make, so you do segmentation, targeting and positioning, and you can create small pouches of soil and sell to your ex students maybe look this is what is the soil which this guy will keep where at a place which is sacred place so the question is how do we look at soil so what i'm saying let's look at what does toothpaste do the business of close-up is not to clean your States rather allow you to have close-ups. So it gives you hope. It gives you hope that today in my lift, I'm going to run into a girl and she will say, Pass out. basically give you comfort, right? But a person who buys Portland, he is wearing an outlook. You are allowing customer to change his personality or slip into what he is not. But you desire to. So the business of brand is what? To make you transform. Business of product is to give you comfortable right. And you got to look at elasticities. So brands make transition. So before you connect, it's a good brand create high order value notes. So you got to move from low value to high value and thank you very much.